Welcome to Activist Planet, a podcast where we share information related to climate change, biodiversity, and more. And the most important, create awareness. There is no Planet B. One of the topics that I have always wanted to have in this podcast is talk about composting. I find it very interesting and necessary. However, believe it or not, not many people know about it. They don't know what it is. They don't know how to do it at home, what benefits it brings to the planet, and much more. That is why we have as a guest John Petroff, an entrepreneur with a composting company in North Adams, Massachusetts. And today we will talk in simple words about composting. So, John, how are you? And so I am so happy to have you today as a guest in my podcast, Activist Planet. How are you? I'm doing great, and I'm glad to be here. I appreciate you having me on. It's it's. I love spreading the word and awareness about co uh, composting. So that's great, John. What is composting in simple words? Sure, composting is the natural breakdown of organic materials, um, including things such as food scraps, uh, leaves, wood chips, sawdust, manure. Um, that's kind of like a, a, a broad way of looking at what composting is. It's, it's a way of nature breaking down those products into soil amendment that can help grow more things in the future. There are endless benefits of compost. In your opinion, what are the benefits of compost? Yeah, so I'll start at the end product when you actually have what's called finished compost, which is the product that you would put into your garden or into your farm. And the benefits of that are you're putting what the compost is considered a soil amendment. So it's not soil, it's not dirt, it's actually a living thing with uh, nutrients in it. And when you put that in your garden or at your farm, your whatever you're planting is able to live off of those nutrients and grow more because of it. So at the end of the process, when you have that finished compost, we and other companies that are producing compost can either give it back to the community or sell it back to gardeners or to landscape companies or to farms. And they're able to grow more flowers, more food, more trees, more uh, bushes, plants of all types of things. There's also the benefit on the beginning end of composting. So we, we operate a composting company where we pick up and haul all sorts of organic material and offer drop off So food scraps, wood chips, leaves, sawdust, manure, all those materials. And we also process the material into finished compost, which again, on that end goes back to people to grow more on the, on the end of saving that material from going in a landfill, it's a benefit to the planet because you're cutting down on pollution, you're cutting down on trucking, you're cutting down on putting methane gas into the environment at landfills. So the benefit is you're we're doing what they call closing the loop. So there's basically a natural system that's always happening um, and has been since the beginning of time where things die, they break down, they become something else, and then that helps more things grow. So we're, as a composting company, we close that loop and benefit lo the local in area and beyond in the planet in a bigger sense because we cut down on pollution and we're able to grow more plants and food. And we're running out of topsoil. We're running out of uh, nutrients to be able to plant. And this is what we need to be doing for it. So that those are some of the main benefits. I'm sure as we talk, more things will come up, but those are the basics. John, let's, t let's, let's speak about the time. How long does it take for compost to break down? Some people say like, a, a, for example, one month. Some people say like a, a 12 months or in between. How it works? Sure, sure. Um, this is one of those questions that there's multiple answers to it, depending on what you're doing and what your system you're using. So for us at a commercial scale where we have very large piles, what they call windrows, we have very large windrows, and um, because of that, we are able to get a lot more heat because there's more material, and that heat is what helps 
break everything down. There's my, billions of microbes and they're moving around, eating everything and kind of digesting everything. And we, in composting commercially, um, you can have finished compost sometimes if the conditions are ideal within three months. Um, our system is outdoors and it takes a little longer. So it's more like six to nine months, I'd say, on our end, because we're outside. We kind of dealing with the elements. We're dealing with winter here. Um, the stuff it compo you can compost all year round, but it will take longer during the winter. Or if you you know if this year we had a really rainy season, so that that moisture content kind of changes how everything's working as well. If you're doing it at your home, that can take longer because your pile's not as big and it's not as much mass to break down so that can take up to a year uh the nice thing is it's really hard to screw up composting and it's going to happen no matter what uh, it's been happening since the dawn of time so uh no matter what you do it will happen another thing is you can speed the process of composting up depending on how much you're turning your piles and how much air you're giving them. So if you want to speed it up, you can turn your piles more often, give them more air, and it will happen faster. But that six months, six to nine months, I think is a good commercial gauge. Like I said, some people are able to do it in three. Maybe you have an indoor facility. You know, maybe you have a huge turner that everything is inside and it's monitored the moisture more. Um, but in the elements, the way we do it, six to nine months, if you're doing it at home, probably a year, maybe less, depending on how vigilant you are about turning. But that's kind of the scale you're looking at. John, something that I noticed, because I, I am following your work and or Adams through your company, is like a, you do a lot of education. And I think the purpose of this episode, of this podcast, is to educate more people about these, the benefits of composing. So, but something that I found and personally, including myself, people don't know how or what to compose. Would you mind to explain what we can compose and what we cannot compose to the audience, please? Sure, sure. So that's another one of those questions that's very open-ended depending on what you're doing, but we like to keep things simple. So in a broad sense, what you can compost is anything that was once alive. So... You name it, if it was alive, you can compost it. There, There's farms that compost entire, when an animal passes away, they actually compost them at their farm. So there's far, there's places now in the country uh, that are actually composting human beings after they pass away. And then if you can think beyond that, any organic material that you can think of will compost Yes, I know. I know a guy who, who wants to do that. Yeah, I, I don't know much about it. Um, I actually wish I knew more. It's not something I'm going to be doing as a business, but I, I, hey, we're just as much part of the earth as anything else, and we should go back to the earth. So I'm trying to think a little bit more. So in a in a so in a bigger sense, that's what well, we kind of compose. I'll go a little bit more about what you can compose too. A lot of the common things are. Like I said, food scraps, leaves, anything from a tree is really helpful. You need a lot of brown material. They consider it carbon. You need a lot of brown material to help compost properly. What you can't compost, also, before I get into that, there are some compostable materials that you can compost. So um, There's companies that produce compostable plastic and plates and things like that. You can also compost cardboard. Uh, it's from a tree. You have to be careful with that type of material because a lot of times it has a wax coating on it that's petroleum based. So, but you know, plain paper is made from a tree. It goes back to the earth. Um, oh. What you can't compost are the basic things that you can think of that aren't organic materials. So plastics, metals, glass. Uh, we commonly see things like stickers, twist ties, rubber bands, anything that's not directly I mean, everything's from the earth in some way, but from the earth in a way that hasn't been processed, basically. So, I mean, to me, it makes a lot of common sense. So, you know, if it's glass or like tires or anything like that, 
I it's see. not going to break down. I but no, it, for our company, may, may we sense. accept food scraps, wood chips, leaves, sawdust, that type of material. Uh, you have to be careful, though. Sawdust, you don't want to take sawdust from carpenters or people that are, are using pressure treated wood because it's got the chemicals on there. You don't want to compost anything that has any sort of chemicals. We do not take, in some places do, but we do not take grass clippings because a lot of people use Roundup and, you know, f chemical fertilizers on their lawn. And we don't like to compost that stuff because of that reason. So many people don't know that composting reduce, helps to reduce the impact caused by climate change. How composting can help fight climate change, in your opinion, based on your experience? Yeah, um, I think there's a lot of ways, and it kind of ties into what I talked about at the beginning. Um, as far as climate change, I'll use, I'll use an example that I talk about often. It's a pretty simple example that people can understand. When you eat an apple, right, you have that core that's left over. If you take that core and you put it in your trash, what's going to happen is that's going to be hauled to a, to a transfer station. And then from there, it's going to be picked up and hauled to a landfill, which sometimes is very far away. Like where we live, they haul it all the way to almost the Canadian border in New York state. So that's now that, that apple core is going to sit in a bag and it's going to try to decompose, but it's not going to have any aeration. And you need air for things to compost. You need oxygen. It's going to sit in that bag. It's going to create methane gas, which is really bad for the environment, for the planet. Whereas when you compost, what you're going to do is you're going to take the apple, you're going to bring it to a facility. They're going to mix it with other organic materials, like, like those wood chips or leaves or sawdust, that carbon material. It's going to break down. You're going to give it air when it needs it. It's going to break down naturally, and it's going to become something that instead of creating pollution, is going to create something that we can use to grow more apples in the future. And if you think about one apple and how many seeds are in it, that's a lot of apple trees growing rather than one sitting in a landfill disintegrating um, into nothing. So in that way, it's very helpful. Um, the And I mentioned the landfill. Right. Um, we're running out of landfill space. I know in Massachusetts and I think beyond. Um, so an issue with that is a lot of trucking has to move this material really far away. So you're cutting down on, um, especially if you're composting locally, you're cutting down on gas fumes and travel expenses, things like that. When you compost locally, it comes from the area, actually stays in the area, and then you sell the compost back. We actually work with a restaurant that buys right. most of the material from a local farm. Then they compost it with us. Then we create the compost, and we'll sell it back to the farms. So it keeps everything local, and it keeps cutting down on um, material like that. Right. So in that way, mm -hmm. it's really good for climate change. Um really it's it's the pollution that goes into the the hauling and the moving right. of the material and the methane gas that's being created while it's sitting in the landfill so there's a better home for it where you're going to cut down on that pollution actually you're going to pretty much not have that pollution from the methane gas and you're going going to be able to instead have this compost this finished soil amendment which is going to grow more in the future John, let's talk about your company, company Second Chance Composting. Your company is uh, founded by yourself and very is very community oriented. I will say. Can you share with the audience about your company, how you start? If you just work in North Adams, or you think to expand a little bit in other towns, can you elaborate a little bit? What is Second Chance Composting? We are a pickup hauling processing and drop-off company for food scraps and other organic material. So we started our business in North Adams um, a year and a half ago. And what we do is we pick up, um, we offer residential, we offer commercial, and we do a lot of partnerships. Um, so our residential program we started out, we would have five gallon buckets and people would save their food scraps at home. And then we would go pick them up once a week um, or every other week, depending on how much they were producing. What we do now for our residential program is we're able to offer it cheaper for people. And we've partnered with local communities 
um, or excuse me, local businesses in the different communities here to offer drop-off locations. So we've partnered with a church, partnered with a store that sells tea and tinctures, and we've partnered with another um, location that has a zero waste place. And so any community member signs up for a membership and they save their food scraps and they drop it off to that location, which cuts down on our driving around, um, Mm -hmm. picking the material up. And then we go pick it up once a week there. Um, We also offer commercial scale composting um, of food scraps from restaurants, hotels, schools, any business producing a large amount of material. We use 35 and 32 gallon containers. We pick them up every week. We then rinse them out and leave them rinse totes behind. We have a really good system that's clean and organized. Um, We, in addition, we also partner with This is a big one for us because I used to do tree work and I saw that we had all these wood chips that we were basically to a, to a person doing tree work, the wood chips are a byproduct Mm -hmm. and they don't really need them. They're just, they're just waste to them. But in composting, you need a lot of carbon. You need a lot, you need three parts carbon to one part food scrap. So you need a lot of the material. So we partner with firewood and tree companies, uh, landscapers and farms to offer them we will either pick it up or they can drop it off to us. I have a 10 cubic yard dump truck, and then we have the companies that bring the material to us as well. So we're able to save a lot of that material from being put in a landfill or just wasted sitting in the woods somewhere. We can, It will eventually break down like in the woods, but for us, we can do it quicker and create a really good material out of it. We also do kind of different fun events. So we are doing a pumpkin smash festival. We did it last year, and this year we're doing two of them. So people save their um, ha- um, pumpkins from Halloween, and they bring them. We are doing one in two different towns this year, and they smash them in the back of our truck. Um, so it's a fun night. It's educational. It's taking a product that otherwise would be thrown in the trash and hauled all the way to you know northern New York, and we're keeping it here and then we can compost it. So, and then we're able to make compost out of it and sell it back and then therefore grow more pumpkins with it in the future. So it kind of all comes uh, full circle. John, where can people contact you and have more, you know, uh, information about second chance uh, composting? Sure. I appreciate you having me. Um, and, I, I love doing anything that has to do with education and awareness. If anybody wants to get a hold of us or learn more about composting in general, they can visit our website. It's secondchancecomposting.com. My contact information is on there. You can email us at info at secondchancecomposting.com. And our phone number and is also available on the website as well. So we're glad to answer any questions and anybody has any questions about this. One last thing I did want to mention quickly is there is a lot kind of bringing it back to the beginning question. One of the beginning questions about what can you and cannot you compost. There's some misinformation or misunderstanding about a lot of things like meat, fish, dairy, and bones and we have a commercial facility, so you can compost those things at the level that we do things. Now, if you're composting at your home, you might not want to put those in your compost pile because your pile is not going to get big enough to break down fast enough without attracting like animals and things like that. We do what they call a capping process at the end. We build our piles and then we put a foot over the top of wood chips or leaves or sawdust, whatever carbon material we have, we put over the top. And from me, from within 10 feet away, you wouldn't even know that it's a compost pile. It just looks like a pile of wood chips. There's no smell. Animals don't know it's there. But at your home level, you might not want to put that in there. It does break down. It does compost. Like I said at the beginning, you can compost anything that was once alive. But that's where why some people think you cannot compost that stuff because a lot of people don't like to do that at their home. You can. We've done it you know, as a family, but that's where some of that misinformation or, you know, some misunderstanding comes from. So. Oh, that's, that's great. No, thank you for this information. You know, yes, the accurate information is, is so important. John, I would like to say thank you for your time. 
Thank you very much. I'm I'm glad to be here and glad you invited me on. I appreciate it. Thanks for doing this. this your work's important. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, everyone. I'm Juan Carlos Giraldo. Don't forget to follow us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. If you want to know more about us, you can go to activistplanet.org, you know, where we share content, bilingual content, either way in Spanish or in English about nature, climate change, biodiversity, etc. Thank you so much.